had just like 60 games coming to Nintendo Switch pretty soon. I mean, we're all greedy, right? When we're at the buffet, we all go for that extra slice of cake and then slather it in soft serve ice cream because, hey, I've already paid to be here. I may as well eat until I burst. Well, that's us. We just had Zelda, one of the best games of all time, and also Pikmin. But you know what I say about Pikmin 4? <laughs> I want more. I have 60 games that are coming pretty soon to the Nintendo Switch. My editor, Zach, helped me out with this one. Found a bunch of games. I also found a bunch of games, and we're going to tell you about them right now. If you find something you want to play, let me know down below. And if there's something I missed, let me know down below. I'll probably kick myself about it later, especially if it's an obvious one. Yeah, but I know. Trust me. I see the comments. Oh, would some of these games are also come in a Steam Deck. Can you talk about that? Sure. Or should I say, let me talk about the new Stealth Grip from Satisfy. Because if you plan on picking up any of these games on Steam Deck and you don't have this grip, ugh, what are you? Dumb? <laughs> All jokes aside, a lot of you know that I love my Satisfy Grip on Switch. In fact, I even made my own once. It is the most comfortable way to play your Switch. When I got the Switch Grip, I didn't even think the Switch needed it. But after playing with it, it was obvious I could never go back. And that was the same thing with this new Stealth Grip for the Steam Deck. I thought the Steam Deck is fine. Why would I? Oh, yeah, this is better now. What I love the most about this new grip are the big, very comfortable textured handles that it gives the back of the console, really making it so much more comfortable. And the other thing that I love is just the design of it. It doesn't take away from the look of the Steam Deck at all. In fact, it actually enhances it. I mean, this thing looks like tactical now. I'm pretty sure if I dropped this off a bridge, it would be fine. I'm not gonna test that though. It even comes with this cover that you can snap on top. So rather than having to carry a case around, this thing is fully enclosed now, which is just brilliant. Satisfy has brought its acclaimed ergonomic design to the Steam Deck with the Satisfy Stealth Grip. This new protective grip shifts weight from your fingers to your palms for maximum control and improved comfort. And for a limited time, you can get the Collector's Edition Elite Bundle, which has the Satisfy Stealth Grip, the hardcover, wave rise pads, and a stealth glass. And that's all in their premium Collector's Edition tin packaging. I'm not lying either. As soon as I put this thing on, I was shocked by how much more comfortable it is and just the nice texture that they went with. This feels like such a quality product. And I really couldn't imagine using either of these consoles without Satisfy at this point. All right, I'll leave a link down below if you want to grab one of these and use code BEATEMUPS to get 15% off. And also let me know if you want me to make a Steam Deck video. All right. Let's get to it. I'm gonna go through all of these in the order they released. Our first one is Double Dragon, Rise of the Dragons. This is a brand new, fresh, roguelike take on the franchise with every playthrough being a brand new chance at finding new action. Next, we have Radiant Tail. Look at it. Ah, oh, it's probably a good one, but I wanna skip it and move straight to one I'm actually really looking forward to, Disney Illusion Island. This game reminds me of what would happen if you merged Rayman with Cuphead. I love the cartoon art style and the fact that you can play with friends. I'm actually looking forward to this one, which I'm surprised about because I'm not really a Disney guy. Moving Out was a smash hit on the Nintendo Switch and we have the sequel coming, like moving someone out of their house. How quick can you take all their junk and throw it in the back of a truck? If you played games like Human Fall Flat or Fall Guys, you know the wacky kind of controls you have to deal with here as you slam couches through doorways and crash TVs through windows. Then we have another smash hit, Vampire Survivors. If you've never seen this game before, it might look a little minimalistic, but that's because it's only $5 and somehow incredibly fun and addictive. Huge hordes of enemies will bombard you as you play your way through these roguelike levels, gathering gold each run to upgrade yourself to help the next vampire survivor. Blasphemous! Two is the name of the game. Blasphemous 1 was an absolutely brutal Souls-like 2D game with wonderful pixel art and animation. And I can't wait to see how they've souped it up for a sequel. I will say the platforming now. Whew, God, I can't wait to play this game. Hey. Oh. Yeah, putting 
some jazzy music there, Zach, because we've got Samba de Ami- What's this game called? Samba de Amigo. Party Central. I've never played one of these. It's like Dance Dance, but with a monkey, I think. You've heard of a nightmare. Well, how about a Dayman? Dayman 1994 Sandcastle is a third-person, story-driven survival horror game prequel to the critically acclaimed Dayman 1998. I think it might be something that you weird, creepy people that like scary things. I don't, but you might, and you might like it. A lot of people keep telling me to play Rune Factory, and maybe I will when Rune Factory 3 releases on Switch. I probably won't. I have a lot to play. More than a decade after its original release on Nintendo DS, Rune Factory 3 returns remastered for a new generation on Nintendo Switch. If that's not your cup of tea and you'd like something a little bit more chibi, how about we take a look at Fae Farm? Definitely a cozy game that a lot of people are looking forward to. With tons of characters to meet, obviously a farm and a homestead to nurture and take care of, all the while unfolding mysteries of the island you're playing on. Whether you're playing on your own or with up to three players, which I like because a lot of these farming games don't have online, but I'm seeing more and more of that lately, and that's good. Death or Treat is something I've really been looking forward to. It's a 2D action roguelike with hack and slash. Oh, that's exactly what I like. Explore all of the worlds and defeat hordes of enemies using different weapons and skills. Clearly inspired by games like Hollow Knight and so many others, but I will be picking this one up. Bomberman is back with a bang. Super Bomberman R2. Why did this game need a sequel? I sure as heck don't know because the first one wasn't that fun, but it was one of the first launch titles for Switch and Ergo, being one of the seven games that were available, sold pretty well. So I'm hoping they didn't misconstrue that with it selling well because it was good, but some people are looking forward to it, like my friend Bob. I think that's just because his name is one letter away from being Bomb. I gotta tell you, out of everything we went through so far, <laughs> this one I'm most excited about. Bait and Kados 1 and 2 HD Remaster. Not enough people know about these games. They are classics and hidden gems where you use cards to fight. It's really cool. I like it a lot. Check them out, play them. And now that we have these, if anybody out there is listening and you have the license and the rights to Lost Kingdoms, for the love of God, please give me HD Remaster or those next. Gloomhaven is coming to Switch. My YouTube manager said that he absolutely loves the Gloomhaven board game. And while I haven't played this game before, because it's not out yet, I have played Demio in VR with my friends Bob and Fry Biscuits, and I was actually surprised by how fun this format of a video game is. So I'm looking forward to checking Gloomhaven out. I was shocked that Mortal Kombat 1 was coming to the Switch. And now I don't mean the original one, I mean the new one that they have just called Mortal Kombat 1. It's kind of like when Xbox called it Xbox One, but it was like the fourth Xbox. I don't know. But I don't know why I was surprised MK1 was coming to the Switch, because I remembered MK11 is on Switch, and it was surprisingly fantastic. One of the best ports we have on the console. So I have faith that this fighter will be as fun to play on the go as it will be anywhere else. Days of Doom. Discovering how to best utilize each hero's unique abilities is the key to success in Days of Doom's turn-based combat. The odds against you may seem insurmountable, but if you use your hero's abilities strategically, upgrade them, and add new abilities along the way, just might make it. Avatar The Last Airbender Quest for Balance looks like dog shit. Zach put this one on the list and I almost deleted it because of how bad it looks. You're seeing it right now. The only reason I'm leaving it on is because it's Avatar and we all like Avatar and I thought it would be funny if we looked at how bad this is. Bud Spencer and Terrace Hill Slaps and Beans 2. I had to read that because there's no way I'm ever remembering that title. It's a spaghetti western classic side scrolling beat em up. I just thought this one looked silly and fun so I wanted to add it. I went to PAX recently and I made a video about upcoming Nintendo Switch games from PAX. One of the games I did review and talk about was My Time at Sandrock. It's a sequel, kind of, to My Time at Porsche that a lot of people enjoy. You live life in a town as a builder, a crafter, a farmer, a little bit of everything, and you help save the town from the jaws of economic ruin. Minico's Night Market. I swear to God, I've made so many of these videos, and Minico's Night Market has been in almost all of them over the last several years. But this year truly does seem like the year. 
with a hard release date. You play as Minako, a curious girl who's just arrived at a new home on a struggling Japanese-inspired island at the base of Mount Fugu. You discover secrets behind the town and restore the struggling village to its former glory. It gives me vibes of a lot of indie games I've loved on Switch all mushed into one game, so I can't wait to check it out. Harvest Moon, The Winds of Anthos. The original creator of Harvest Moon doesn't work there anymore and now makes the story of Seasons games that are actually really good. And the Harvest Moon games have been more akin to terrible mobile games of recent years, but I looked up gameplay and it looks like it has stepped up its development a little bit. So have it on your radar maybe if you're just a glutton for these style of games, but there's a lot of options in this category and I don't know if Harvest Moon's the best one. I feel like we've gotten off track, so we need a fresh start. No, a fresh start is the name of the next game. Fresh Start is a relaxing single player game in which you embark on a mission to clean up the world and restore nature to its fresh and colorful shape. It had really good reviews on Steam and I think it's because this whole genre of power washing simulator is so satisfying to people. So add it to your cozy game list. Silent Hope. This one is an isometric dungeon crawler and it harkens back to the glory days of action RPGs, but with a modern flair. What needs to be said about Detective Pikachu Returns? I never played the original because I didn't hear great things, but I'm looking forward to playing this Detective Pikachu for the first time. I mean, that's a story-driven game, which I love, featuring a talking Pikachu who loves coffee. This should be right up my alley. Maybe I'll play the first one before this comes out. Nah, I, I don't have time. The list is starting to heat up. We have Super Mario Brothers Wonder. I have been dying for classic Mario to get a revamp and an upgrade. And this is everything I've been wanting. It's no secret that the formula became very stale with Nintendo releasing essentially the same game after the same game after the same game. But after a break in 2D Mario's, now we have this fresh new take where everything is different from the art style and the animation. This is an evolution of 2D Mario like I never expected. I said this on my podcast recently and I like the way I said it, so I'm gonna try and rephrase it. With games like Tears of the Kingdom, you clearly see the evolution of Zelda games to get to that point. You see little pieces of that game in previous Zelda games. So it makes sense that we're finally here. But with Mario Brothers Wonder, it's almost like we're missing several 2D Marios that never released filled with new and exciting ideas. And now we've just got them all at once out of nowhere in Mario Wonder. And it's so starkly confusing in a good way. Metal Gear Solid Master Collection. You got Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid 2, and Metal Gear Solid 3 all on their way to the Switch. Now, before this year, I'd never played a Metal Gear game. And in preparation for these to come out, I played the Game Boy Color game and I started Metal Gear 5 the other night. So I'm ready to become a Metal Gear guy when these drop on Switch. Headbangers Rhythm Royale is the most random game I've seen lately where you play as a pigeon against 29 other players in a rhythm-based game that reminds me of Fall Guys. You compete in multiplayer games to be, I'm assuming, the last pigeon standing, or I guess the last pigeon dancing. We've seen a lot of this 2D HD art style from games like Octopath Traveler and so on, but Star Ocean, this new one? I don't know how it can get any better. The highly acclaimed second installment in the Star Ocean series returns as Star Ocean The Second Story R. It fuses 2D pixel art characters and 3D environments. There's a lot of great features here, like Japanese and English voiceover options, the iconic original soundtrack rearranged by the original composer, and so many other great features. This looks like one of those remasters that was actually remastered. It feels like we just got a WarioWare game, but this one looks like a more traditional WarioWare flair. WarioWare, move it. Get moving as you shake, punch, dance, wiggle, and even curtsy through over 200 lightning fast micro games. When they say micro games, they mean games that literally last two seconds. They go by so quickly, your brain doesn't even have time to compute. You just do your best, and that's why it's fun. The last WarioWare game I finished in two hours and never played again, and it was arguably one of the most expensive games I bought, considering how long I played it. So I'm hoping there's some extra replay value in this new one. Now, I don't much enjoy talking about old Harry Potter, because
because of she who must not be named. But I want to because it's funny that this game still thinks it's coming to Switch. It completely missed the launch window of every other console. And I'm sorry, it is not happening. It is hilarious to me to think that somewhere out there, there is a team of people trying to get this game onto the Switch. It's just not going to happen. And if we do see it, it's going to be a disaster. And I really hope it happens because I want to review that disaster. Persona 5 Tactica. It's a brand new story featuring chibi versions of the characters we already know and love from the Persona 5 game. I'm going to have to wait and see on this one, though, because I'm not totally sold on this one yet. I'm definitely going to play it, and I'm looking forward to it. Something I'm looking forward to 50 times more is Super Mario RPG The Remake. This colorful RPG has updated graphics and cinematics that add in even more charm to the unexpected alliance between Mario, Bowser, Peach, and the original characters of Mallow and Gino. Everybody loves Gino. This game is so hard to explain why it's so good and why it works so well. And I'm so excited that a whole new generation of gamers get to experience this for the first time. Another series that keeps releasing spin-off and weird game and new title after new title is Dragon Quest. And here we have Dragon Quest Monsters the Dark Prince. So I'm not totally sure what you do in this Dragon Quest game other than you capture monsters and you gene splice them together to create new ones and then you make those battle for you. I'm just not sure of how much of an explorable world you have on top of all of this. Either way, I'm a big Dragon Quest fan and I'll be checking it out. Speaking of games that definitely are not coming. But another game I played at PAX was Lord of the Rings Gollum. I ended up cutting that part out of the video though, because it was the only game that I talked about in that video that I reviewed negatively. I felt too bad just ragging on this indie developer and it being the only game that I just didn't like. So I cut it out of the video. Then the game released shortly after that. And then you guys know what happened there. But the Switch version was always planned to come later. And I think after the reception that that game just had, it's probably safe to say that ain't happening. And I do feel bad because this dev has made some of my favorite point and click games. I just don't think they were ready for a big third person action game. But a game I played at PAX that I did really like was Rift of the Necro Dancer. Cadence of Hyrule is a great game and it's had a lot of wacky spin-offs at this point. So it's tried to splice those in a new genre, kind of like a Guitar Hero game where all the enemies fall down along a timeline that is all played to the beat of awesome music. Sounds easy, yet complicated because a lot of the enemies don't go down on one hit and will sometimes move over the timeline or go back up or just completely confuse you. And it all comes together in a very fun experience. Sea of Stars is another JRPG with a classic style that has pixel art animation that reminds me kind of of Metal Slug. It has a story rich adventure with dozens of characters and story arcs that will take you on a captivating journey. It has sailing, cooking, fishing, taverns to relax I wish I had time to play all these JRPGs. I just, I don't. Song of Nunu. I don't know much about this game, but apparently it's a League of Legends spinoff. But it's a whole big single player adventure with a young boy on a quest to find his lost mother. It kind of reminds me of like a good troll and I, if the troll was like an abominable snowman. Jujutsu Kaisen Cursed Clash. I swear every anime has an arena fighter at this point, And this is another one that's coming this year. Myth Force. Step into a set. Saturday morning cartoon, an adventure through crypts and castles with your friends in this first person melee roguelike. I actually really want to play this one. All three Batman Arkham games have finally found their way to the Switch. They're coming this fall. They are classic games. I love each one very much. It is Mark Hamill doing probably my favorite Mark Hamill role of all time as the Joker. This is an absolutely epic trilogy that should have released on the Switch like year one. I don't know what to so long. It does feel like a little too late. These would have been perfect to play on the go. Now the novelty is a little old, but I shouldn't complain because there will be a whole generation of people that have never played these games that finally have access to them, and they are some of the best of all time. Toxic Crusaders! Toxic Crusaders! So Toxic Crusaders, you might not remember it, but if you do, it has a new beat-em-up that's coming out pretty soon. It's one of the other games I played at PAX, and just so happens to be being developed by the team that manages my YouTube 
YouTube channel. So I'm kind of close to this one, but I have nothing to do with it. It does look great. It reminds me of the Simpsons arcade beat em up. I have played it and I do like it. Exophobia is a retro inspired first person shooter with fast paced combat. You wake up and find yourself alone in a human spaceship infested with hostile alien soldiers. Shoot, dash, stun your enemies and create your own path to survive. That was all the games from 2023. But we have release dates for games that are coming early 2024 and beyond. You want to talk about those? I know you do because the first one is Prince of Persia and this one looks awesome. They've given it a fresh new cartoon art style and they've slapped it in a 2D Metroidvania style side-scrolling plane and I really didn't see Prince of Persia going back to this format after all these years of the more 3D open Prince of Persia games but I'm glad it did. What I'm excited the most about it is just the gameplay. The fast-paced action, platforming, and combat mixed in with the sands of time that lets you pick a point to return to whenever you want, leading to some really organic, flowing, and awesome-looking gameplay. I'm down for this new pop. Okay, hands up who remembers Biomutant that released a couple years ago and was very mediocre, looked like it might be good, but then no one enjoyed it. Now keep your hand up if you knew it was coming to Switch next year. Yeah, that's what I thought. Animal Well is an upcoming Metroidvania style game that's actually being published by Dunkey. And I met him when I played the game also at PAX. The player controls a blob and explores a labyrinth while avoiding animals. And if you want to know what Dunkey thinks about the game, this is what he said when I asked him. Him. It's just the greatest game ever created. Well, you gotta get it. Penny's Big Breakaway. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. This is made by the same team that made Sonic Mania. And now here they are making their first new IP. And it seems very Sonic inspired. Just by the uh, the notion of gotta go fast, I guess. I like the penguins. The penguins are very cute. I need, I, I'm actually annoyed that another crab's treasure isn't coming until next year. It's a Souls-like game where you play as a crab. You wear the trash around you as your shell to withstand attacks from enemies much bigger than you. I have a really good feeling about this one. Little Kitty, Big Kitty. It's an upcoming adventure video game where you play as a cat lost within a city. And yet it sounds a lot like Stray, but maybe not as good. I, can't, I don't know. This game might not even be that good, but it has a cat in it. You play as a cat. I love cats. Okay, look, I'm not even gonna... I'm just gonna... Metro Prime 4. Glad we got that out of the way. Speaking of Prince of Persia, you guys might have forgotten this, but but they did promise a Sands of Time remake a while ago, and it's supposedly still happening, and it has a rough release date of just next year sometime. So if you're a fan of Ace Attorney, get ready for Apollo Justice Ace Attorney Trilogy. We don't have any Phoenix Wright games on the Switch, which is very strange. So it's nice we'll have these three to play. And while that's everything confirmed for next year, who even knows what's gonna happen? There's a bunch of games that we should be getting on Switch, and it could be this year, it could be next, Next year, but they don't have dates yet. And we're gonna start that section with Professor Layton and the New World of Steam. This series has over 18 million units sold worldwide. It's a puzzle fantasy adventure that will have you solving just a ton of riddles. I can't believe it's been so long since we've seen this franchise. You suck at parking is the name of the next game. Actually, fun fact, while parking yesterday, I hit a wall and I scratched the side of my car. I gotta get that looked at. So I suck at parking. It's a colorful game where you challenge the world, customize your ride in this ever-evolving parking simulator. Oh, another game with vampires. Vampire Masquerade. You play as three vampires, <laughs> wielding their powers wisely and striking the balance between your human and animal side. It's a narrative RPG in which every choice determines the fate of these three characters. Pallia is one that I have my eye on because on this list, I think it's the only free to play game. It's kind of like Animal Crossing or Disney Dreamlight Valley or insert game here, but free to play with a massive online component. You can play online with up to 25 other players. The game itself has romanceable characters, farming, crafting, cooking. This one might actually be good. Sonic Superstars. I'm actually not big on Sonic, but this new one does look good. It looks like classic Sonic, but with an all new refreshed art style that you can play co-op. My only question is what happens if I gotta go really fast and my friends are maybe a little slow and fall behind? How does that work when you're all on the one screen? Either way, it doesn't have online co-op, I don't think. So I guess I'll never find out because my friends would have to come over. And what is it? 2005? What are we gonna play Halo on our Xboxes all linked together with monitors that we had to bring in a giant LAN session? No. This is 2023. Why is this not online? Sorry, I didn't mean to go on a rant about 
a game that actually does look pretty fun. Sonic Superstars. <laughs> I don't even know why that's in the TBA section because it does say that's releasing in fall. So I think my list got a little wacky near the end, but hey, you get a nice little treat at the end of the video. Now that isn't every game that's coming out for the Switch this year and next year. Just the ones I think are even worth taking a look at. There is a ton more games that are gonna release and a ton more that'll get announced and revealed that'll probably outdate this video by the time there's a next Nintendo Direct. I love that the Switch is still getting all this support. It has been a wild five or six years with the Nintendo Switch and I can't wait to see where it goes. I've always enjoyed making these videos talking about upcoming games because it helps me to know what's coming out so I can do my job better. But I also get to look forward to all these games with all of you and there's always something for everyone, which is what I love about this stupid portable handheld console. But if there's something I missed, as I said, let me know down below. Let me know what you're most excited for and why it's Mario RPG, because that's the one I'm most excited for. And I'll see you in the next one. As always, I love you guys. Bye.